It's after 7 o'clock in Trinidad and Tobago. It is Monday and it does mean with the support of Nescafe that it's time for our business breakfast uh, segment and we want to, to focus on the Trinidad and Tobago Chamber of Commerce because they're hosting their 7th Caribbean Facilities Management Conference and Expo. Uh, they hold it every two years so it's biennial. Uh, and uh, therefore it, it is something that is of, of great importance to them. It aims to examine ways to integrate facilities management plans with corporate strategy and how to forge links with national level first respondents and emergency systems. If it sounds very technical, our guest is going to break it down for us and give us more information because the conference will also include a combination of sharing of formal best practice knowledge, real life examples and scenarios. Well, as I said, to put it all in context, we're joined by three personalities to give us information. We have Mr. Edward Casal, who is the chairperson of the Chamber's Facilities Development and Management uh, Committee. We're also joined by Akian Matthews, who is closest to me. She's the member of the International Facility Management Association, Trinidad and Tobago chapter. And also with us is Christine Salandi, a member of the International Facility Management Association, Trinidad and Tobago chapter as well. Good morning to all. Thanks very much uh, for joining us. Us. Thank you for And after us. such a lengthy introduction, <laughs> that was longer than Michael Holding's run up in his glory days, <laughs> let me ask Mr. Casal to bowl, bowl the first ball in our discussion this morning because we're talking about the event that's coming up on September the 18th and 19th. It's held every two years. It's going to be at the Hyatt Regency. Um, and uh, indeed, w essentially, why would you want to see people? Uh, attending this particular event, Mr. Casal. Okay, we we seen we have been seeing more and more natural disasters as well as man-made disasters affecting us or having the capability of affecting us. So, with climate change, we've seen hurricanes becoming a little more erratic. And sadly, like we see what is going Dorian on right now with the Bahamas with Dorian. Yeah, completely destroying Bahamas. It defied the models. The models did not expect a Category Five. We are at the edge of the hurricane bed, so we are, we are at risk. What we saw last year with the floods, which tend to accompany hurricanes, is that we are not prepared as a country. Our, our focus is not on the national level so much, but more on what can we do as organizations, as companies, government organizations, schools, um, homeowners, to protect ourselves, to plan, um, manage the disaster as it's happening, and recover quickly. Again, earthquakes was another example. We had a fairly bad one last year. The, the, the experts say that was just a wake-up call. One day we could get we could get a much worse one. So how do we prepare ourselves? How do we recover quickly? And we saw a, a lot of different um, scenarios play out last year where there was damage. Most people kept it we had, quiet. We had the flooding of October last Major year. Major well. flooding that, that people still are recovering from. Fortunately, a lot of businesses did escape, but that could change, and the fact is once people can't get to work, it does affect business as well. So how do we, as organizations, take care of ourselves and plan better for these things? Because we don't think we have a culture of planning and, and preparing properly for, for these disasters. And we'll get these specifics about the actual event, how people could register and, and sure. the deadlines and so on in a moment. But let me bring in our, our other guests as well for their perspective. Uh, uh, Ms. Matthews, why, why is this important? Again, it sounds like the usual stupid media question, why is this important? But many people say, well, we have other priorities. We don't have to worry about Hurricane Dorian because we're safe. We don't ever get hit by a hurricane and the floods last year was because they didn't fix the drain and so on. Those are not major issues. Why is such a conference important, especially for the business community? And you hit it on the head there because we feel we're safe. Um, natural disasters, the question, is, the question is, is it the new normal? And we're seeing that it is um, year after year. The impact of natural disasters is becoming more real for us. And the only way we can recover properly, quickly is by preparing, preparing ourselves, preparing our organizations, preparing our facilities, making sure it's ready and able to withstand um, the risk and the exposure of such disasters that are occurring so that our business can continue at a shorter, can recover and continue quickly. Um, the culture is about complacency in a sense. We feel, as you said, it never happens here with the possibility or probability of it happening in Trinidad and Tobago is quite slim, but we, we don't have control um, over those natural disasters. All we can do is say prepare, plan, and recover. 
And, and you know, Mr. Landy, the, 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 maybe the average business person might say, my, my biggest threat is bandits uh, breaking into my place rather than a storm or a hurricane or an earthquake or whatever. My, my business is likely to be shaken up by, by teeth breaking into my place and so on. So they, they may argue, well, that is more of a priority than considering all of the, the integration of systems and structures uh, to assist in the event of natural disasters. Well, that, that's that's in, in why we want to create that awareness that you know emergency pre preparedness and business continuity are key critical areas that we have to pay attention to. Um, to we too often have a, a complacency attitude. We wait till the disaster is actually on us and then we run in helter skelter into the supermarkets and trying to get this and trying to do this and you know everybody is not sure who are the first respondents what do we do and it, we, I, we say it's so critical that that information is shared and we we get more information we you know we actually plan and and and, and when we see what happened with Dorian um, you know in the Bahamas it was heading to Barbados and the, the Barbadians started to prepare they shut down the country Everybody was trying to, you know, prepare and everything, and then it didn't happen. And then people say, "What a waste of time! We should have just continued our business. We should not have shut the country down." So that's the attitude. Well, you know, the preparedness is not seen as a significant, you know, um, thing to do. And I, I think that we need to change that whole culture, that whole thinking. We need to really look at, you know, in light of what is happening every year, all these disasters are happening. We have to be prepared and, and, and you know, go through the, the necessary drills and training and everything that we need to do to put in place so that, you know, we can have business continuity in the, in the event of a disaster. And while we're continuing our discussion, uh, Mr. Casal, uh, as far as the, the event that's coming up, September 18th and 19th at the Hyatt Regency, uh, what, what is the basic information as far as uh, registration, deadline for registration and so on, uh, if, if people want to be part of this particular event? We, we have no hard deadline. We can register right up to the day, right? We can go online at TT IFMA's website, that's TTIFMA, or the Chamber's website. Both of them have direct links to be able to register. The TT IFMA, you can actually register online, or you can call the Chamber and ask for Sherilyn. Um, but, but the easiest way is just to reach out to us at TT IFMA. On, 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 we on Facebook, we on LinkedIn. Um, the chambers on, 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 on Facebook and LinkedIn either so, as well, so you can just reach out and send a message and, um, or, or call. And, and because so. you've been hosting these events every two years, yeah. are you seeing a difference, a change in attitude, or is there still a level of complacency that is cause for concern? I think we have seen a change. So uh, this is the first year that we focused on disaster management. Prior years, we focused more on how do we get public buildings um, looked after better, how do, we, how do we raise the general awareness of, of, of the industry and the, and the profession. And I think we have seen um, a lot more, the term facilities management has now become part of the, our, our language. We start to see people advertising for the positions. We see even government campuses and, 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 and buildings um, fleshing out their facilities management departments. We do believe there's a lot more that could be done, but we do think that, that, that uh, we may have played some small part in developing the uh, profession in Trinidad and Tobago. And, and Ms. Matthews, is, is IFMA playing a specific role at, at the event uh, that, that is coming up? And tell, tell us about it. It's a collaboration, actually, between the International Facility Management Association and the Chamber of Commerce. Um, we've held independent conferences before, but we felt to, to create greater impact in the facility management industry, we felt it's better to collaborate in a, with such a significant um, topic that we're dealing with that impacts every industry. It impacts people, it impacts our processes, it impacts our, our business places and technology that we, we integrate into. So we felt that this collaboration in this year was even more significant because of the value um, in addressing this very important issue of natural disasters was important. So IFMA uh, has a key role in terms of providing speakers. We have the chairman of IFMA, uh, who is also an executive of AT&T International, who will be one of our feature speakers. We have people like Malcolm Reed, who is a known Trinidadian who lives overseas, who is a business continuity expert. So we have been playing a role in terms of bringing these key experts together to bring value to the attendees and really bring practical tools that we can apply in our jobs to ensure that our, our 
businesses, our facilities are properly planned and prepared to recover quickly from a natural disaster. And you know, Mr. Lani, that's what, what some business people might be saying. I hear what you're saying that is important, but why I must give up two days to come and see in this Gova season? I can't, you feel like, uh, is that, am I going to get value for money? Am I going to actually benefit? What's the sort of discussion that's going to happen at the, uh, what sort of agenda are we talking from, about? From the leaders in the industry, from stakeholders, um, best practices, um, Lots of information coming up in terms of, you know, um, your, your preparedness, how to prepare, um, or, uh, your, your risk assessments, um, insurance, aspects of insurance, and a lot of information. Um, too often, when disaster actually happens, we don't even know, you know, how do we assess our, our, our damage, um, who to go to, what, you know. A lot of information is not known. And in this conference, it's going to really, I mean, it's exciting because there's a lot of new information coming up. Will there be opportunity for feedback as well for like a question and answer oh, sort of things? Certainly. We will have um, sessions where, you know, there is that interaction with, you know, speakers and um, the, the audience. And those are key because they are divided in different sections. So it becomes more, you know, intimate. You can ask questions and, and get more, you know, get a lot of feedback. I, you know, Mr. Cassell, I, I mean, o over the years, we're becoming more and more aware, slowly but hopefully surely, about health and safety issues. But even up to now, sometimes people feel a little stupid doing drills. Mm -hmm. You know, you're doing the drills and then people are watching and say, this is going to happen here, what are we doing, wasting time doing this and so on. From, from your own point of view, why is this, uh, as a final point uh, from you in relation to the event, why is this so very important? It sounds uh, obvious, but for many people, it doesn't seem as obvious as it should. The thing is, a disaster can happen. Last year we had an earthquake and it happened just after work finished. If it had happened at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, it would have been a different story. We would have had to evacuate all the public buildings and it would have been just like a fire evacuation. Um, the, 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 the interesting thing about what happened last year is that even some pretty sophisticated businesses, when we came to do repairs in the buildings, realized that they were underinsured. Or, or improperly insured, and, and they didn't even realize that, and, and, and were shocked. And therefore, they, if, even if the best businesses can learn something in terms of how to, how to prepare better. Um, yes, people find that drills are, are, are annoying, but it can happen, something can happen, and, and if, it does hap if it does happen, then you, you, you ride through it much better. It's just like putting on a seatbelt in the car. You, you don't crash for five years, but the day that you do crash, you are prepared. Indeed, and, and, and I mean, that's what we see. Put and, on your seatbelt. And you see the chaos that prevails with the slightest thing that goes that's on. That's right. A water main right. burst. You, you feel like the whole country shut yeah, down yeah. because traffic is bad. Eight hours up. of traffic, yeah. Indeed. <laughs> but it, it is something very relevant. Yeah. And eight hours of traffic, even without a police day of policing, uh, which we all remember from 2013. But uh, before we wrap up, let's remind you it's the seventh Caribbean Facilities Management Conference and Expo, September 18th and 19th at the Hyatt Regency. Uh, you can go to uh, the, the website to get all the information of the, the chamber. They're also on Facebook as well. Or for dinosaurs like myself, you could also call. Just still, you can still dial seven numbers and reach somebody. 637-6966, 637-6966, extension 1228. That's 637-6966, extension 1228 for more information on the event. That's uh, just about two weeks away from now. Thanks very much uh, Thank for you. being with us Thank this morning. Much. And let's hope people pleasure. really take advantage of uh, this very important conference uh, and indeed make us even more aware of the need to be prepared for the disaster that will certainly happen at some time or the other. We'll be right back here on Morning Edition. Oh,